Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 3rd of November. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined uh, this morning from Rangers Review HQ, Johnny McFarlane. How are we doing, Johnny? Yeah, doing well, Derek. Looking forward to talking about Rangers. Obviously, I've not uh, been on in the last couple of briefs, so yeah, good to give my uh, take on events as they have panned out over the last couple of days. Yeah, uh, yeah, another uh, punishing defeat on, on, on Tuesday night, of course. And um, before we talk th- things, Rangers folks, you can see the little ticker below, and uh, the link is in uh, the title uh, of this video as well. Uh, you know the drill by now. It's just uh, uh, one pound for two months worth of coverage over on the website. Just head over to RangersReview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Uh, I assure you, you won't be disappointed. And as you can see, a little banner on the screen as well. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is totally free. Uh, thousands of you uh, signing up to that. So thanks very much for doing so. Um, and yeah, every day, of course, during the week, we talk all things Rangers. Uh, and of course, we cover the club extensively on match days as well. Um, okay, Johnny, now I put the title into this, this video uh, why Rangers' next three games is make or break for Van Bronckhorst. It seems like every game at the moment is must win. The Champions League is now uh, finito. Uh, I th- think um, every Rangers supporter is uh, delighted at that. There's no more punishing beatings to come. It's all focus on domestic action now. Rangers have three matches in six days starting on Sunday. Uh, a difficult trip, you have to say, to Perth to take on St. Johnston followed by a midweek um, match against Hearts at Ibrox and fit culminating uh, in a trip to Paisley to take on St Mirren and on Sat- a week on Saturday, uh, an early kick-off in that one. He has to win all three, doesn't he, Johnny? He absolutely does. It's, um, it's very important that he goes out there and uh, performs in these next three games. It's, it's absolutely essential. There's, there's just no two ways about it, Derek. The, the, the kind of temperature, the mood music that there is amongst the fans at the moment means there is no room for error. And uh, against the two Saints and then obviously Hearts in midweek, you just need to get it done. You need to get it over the line. And hopefully we see a little bit of finesse, a bit of um, class about this Rangers team, like we saw against Aberdeen um, as well. And that's absolutely crucial, Derek, because the Champions League, let's be honest, um, it was a mercy when it was over. I don't know about the guys in the comments. I'd be interested to know what you thought. Obviously, I was at Ibrox covering the game for the website. And it was just a total sense of apathy. I wasn't angry or frustrated at the performance. I was just complete. It was just flat. And I felt like my colleagues that were there um, covering the game just kind of felt the same way. It was, you know, there wasn't that anger that there was after Amsterdam or that consternation that there was after Liverpool. It was just a sense of inevitability about the result and the performance. And for me, the thing was, I just think all three of these teams are significantly better than Rangers in the Champions League. And it was a, it was, it was such a romantic group, and yeah. it was so beguiling the prospect of going to Napoli, going to Amsterdam, and then Liverpool, obviously. But the truth is, looking back, we were wrong. We were wrong to be beguiled by the. The romance of it. And the reality is Ajax are the the least powerful team in that group. And they've got a budget of you know a hundred million pounds a year in terms of their, their wage structure. So that that's significant uh, against what Rangers are paying. And fundamentally, um that 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 class gap has really shown. I think Rangers would have done significantly better in Celtic's group against um, Shakhtar, um, RB Leipzig, who, remember, they beat last season. Um, And obviously, Real Madrid would have been extraordinarily difficult. But I think those the two teams underneath the top seed in their groups were were, were of less quality, clearly, than than the ones that Rangers had to face. And, and, And that's why it's been so painful. That's put massive pressure on domestically, Derek. Uh, and in a way, it's it's there's positives to take from the Champions League in terms of the finance. Um, I know there's been a lot of uh, silly figures that have been thrown around. Uh, the finance for the Champions League is not going to be anything like the the kind of forty million bounty that we that we hear about. Um, it'd be significantly less than that, but it's still a it's still a boost on the Europa League even without any points. Uh, but the the morale element of it is, I think, taking its toll. Um, yeah. Physically, mentally, uh, 
the Champions League is really tough if you're in Rangers position. And that means um, it's, it's almost a mercy that it's over. Uh, a friend said, yeah. said that to me after the game. And I, I thoroughly agreed with that, that position. So what Rangers have to do now is they have to clear their heads, forget about what's gone. They, there'll be time for a, a sit down and a picking over the bones of that campaign. But that is not now. What is needing now is they need to look ahead to uh, first St. Johnson with Hearts and St. Mirren in mind as well, that you need to go out, show some fight, show some spirit and replicate, Derek, that Aberdeen performance. If they do that, I think Rangers as a club, Rangers fans as a group, of, uh, as, as a group will be in a better place a week on Sunday because yeah. we'll have had three victories, three convincing victories, with high quality performances, and that's all they need to do. Um, they need to replicate that Aberdeen standard. If they do that, they'll sail through this and be in much better shape. I'm quite sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Your point about Ajax is interesting. That the, the weakest team in the group, they were in pot one, which tells you how how strong that that, that group was. But uh, some comments coming in as well saying. Um, like you say, that you don't get the money that was uh, suggested. In fact, uh, Van Bronckhorst did say that in, in his uh, press conference. He said uh, uh, when he was asked about, uh, in retrospect, do you think the club should have done more to strengthen in that week before the transfer window closed? Um, he did say, I know that the club will do everything to try to build the strongest squad we have. I've read many stories that we struck gold with so many millions coming in. It's not true. It's not true. All the figures I see in the papers, we don't have that budget to spend. So that's another thing we saw in the beginning. We play in the Champions League, so we have £40 million extra. That is not true, and that creates an expectation that we can buy new players. Uh, the way we bought the players this season is to qualify for the Champions League, but I don't think the club will spend millions if the millions aren't there. Listen, I think that was the aim at the, at the start of the season, Johnny, get into the Champions League. And I think there was almost a, a sense of, right, job done, um, and that, that was it. Uh, and... Based on the performances, it certainly looks like um, they reached that sort of milestone and and, and they felt that was a job done. Um, but listen, it was a, a massive learning curve that, that, that the last six games and the competition. Um, you do hope if Rangers reach that stage next season uh, that they're better prepared and they'll need to take that on board because it was an absolute chasing every single game um, and it wasn't good to watch. And like you say, apathy at the end, um, which is the worst feeling in football for the fans not to really care and um, you hear our supporters, uh, I heard of supporters leaving at half time in matches. That's that is not a good sign. But like you say, Johnny, domestically, it does seem to get a bounce from these uh, European uh, displays, these abject displays. And we've seen it, uh, and like you say, Aberdeen last weekend, which was arguably the best performance of the season. Stevie Clifford actually said it was the best domestic performance under Giovanni van Bronckhorst. Would you go as far as that? No, I wouldn't. Um, I disagreed with Stevie when I heard him say that. I think the best domestic performance under Giovanni van Bronckhorst was against Celtic at Hamden um, with a 2-1 win, where I thought they were the better side um, for huge portions of the game. And uh, they did that having come off European exertions. And I thought that was a very, very good performance considering Celtic were very fresh. Um, but Steve's right in that it's right up there. It, it was a terrific performance, Derek. It was a joy to watch. The atmosphere at the ground was was back to Ibrox at its best. And, and that's because the crowd were responding to what they were seeing on the pitch. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it, Derek. A big thing about this is about hope. Yeah. It's about having that sense that there's something to look forward to in the future, that there's there's progression in the team and that the Rangers are actually a, a team going somewhere as opposed to stagnating or even declining. Um, I don't think things are as negative as some would have you believe. I think there is, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why before the comments explode. Um, <laughs> if you look at some of the signings who have been struck down by injury, I think it's now safe to say that Lawrence, Davies and Yomaz all look like they can add to this team. Not the squad, the team. Cholak as well. 
Uh, Cholak goes without question, mate. But I'm talking about the guys that are that are kind of ah, currently injured. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But their injuries means that it's very, very difficult for Rangers to kind of show the evolution of the team. Now, Josh been going on about for ages. It's tactical, um, and some people will turn off at this. But the ability of Yilmaz to go both inside and out changes the kind of the dynamic of of Rangers team and it's so unfortunate you've got this young guy who's come in he's needed time to adjust Turkish football is completely different he's had to bulk up he's had to work on his stamina etc etc get used to the, the culture the food and just as he's coming into things just as he's he comes on and shows so much in a five minute cameo he goes off injured and he's out for a wee while and that's just real bad luck and I know people are frustrated and they want to take it out on someone and they want to you know, you know, they're angry that the club's four points behind Celtic and has, has undergone the worst Champions League campaign, and I completely understand that. But I do see some green shoots there, and I think it's got beyond the stage of being able to just say, "Oh no, this is Rangers. We don't, we don't care about the injuries." I think there has to be a little bit of cognizance of of the tools that Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is working with. Yeah, and uh, at the moment, his tools are diminished and and, and limited. And you know yourself, if you try and do your garden, you don't have a lawnmower, you just have a pair of scissors, it's quite difficult. Um, you need the tools to complete the task. And, and I think he's a little bit hamstrung, certainly in the Champions League level, and certainly in showing that evolution. But you mentioned Cholak, and I've mentioned three players of the seven that came in. I think four of them now have really shown that there's, there's something there. Rabi Matondo's frustrating. There's a, there's a big question about how that the money that Rangers had has been spent. I don't think there's any doubt about that. That's that's a, a valid thing to discuss. It's a valid thing to look at. Yilmaz may be a good player. He may add a lot to the team. But was it wise to spend all that money on Yilmaz when you have such a glaring deficiency in terms of energy and, 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 and pace and power in that midfield driving forward? I think that's valid. Um, but... Looking forward, Derek, and, and looking at the domestic scene, I think Rangers have been pretty unlucky with some of the injuries. I mean, I've talked about Kmart Roof before. It's very, very frustrating yeah. to see him um, back and then out again. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Kmart needs to have a think about, you know, whatever he's doing, whatever his process is, because this is a guy with immense talent, Derek. We've said it over and over and over again, and he, he needs to get himself... In a, in a place where he's managing... Yeah, I've, I've given up with him, to be honest, Johnny. It's, 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 what have we seen of him since? We, we, he came on, obviously, had a penalty in that Europa League final. Um, and we didn't see him really again, did we? Um, I'm not entirely sure he played in the Scottish Cup final, to be honest. Uh, came back, uh, had a bit of a cameo against Dundee. Uh, and then that was him out again. So we're not going to see him until January... Well, end... Well, Van Bronckhorst said a couple of weeks we're talking the team will come back after the World Cup break. What the first match is against Hibs in in, in mid December. Um, will we see him again in a Rangers jersey? I, I have no idea. I, I sort of go along with Ali Quinn here. He says that Roof is finished. Um, uh, he's one of a number. Hollander's another one that you don't hear of it anymore, and I've sort of given up hope with him. Um, so yeah, it's it's hugely frustrating, Johnny, because these are players like you say. When we all know their qualities, when they are fit, they are first team starters. Each well, each and every one of them, you could say, Goldson, Lawrence, Hadji. Um, you could you could go on. There's, there's um, more there. The one the one good thing, I guess, is Alex Lowry came on in midweek, um, which is a, a positive sign. He's one player that sort of Rangers fans have been crying out for uh, to watch and. Um, that's that's course, massive, Derek. People yeah. don't realise, uh, we're talking about the midfields, right? And, and Rangers yeah. as a club, and I had a long piece with um, Craig Mulholland at the weekend that I ur urge everyone to, who's interested in the kind of the holistic stuff that's going on behind the scenes at Rangers to make Rangers a more strengthened club, um, to have a read of that and just get, at least understand Craig's perspective of what's going on behind the scenes and, and what they're doing. And one of the things they have been deliberately doing is creating pathways into the first team. Um, and I think that there was a pathway there that would allow Alex Lowry to have minutes. And again, he's been struck down by injury, um, which has obviously been really difficult. But Lowry, if you're talking about guys who can create from midfield, 
there's another one. You know, yeah. Lowry, Haji, Lawrence. Lawrence is huge. These are these are big blows on the injury front. And listen, pe- some people won't want to hear it. And some people will say you're you're, um, you're making excuses, Derek. And if these people saying that, you should put them up because we want to give them a hearing. We want to make sure everyone's point of view is heard. But I I just think it's got to the stage with the injuries. You can't you can't look past that at this stage. Um, you just can't. And yeah. Aldo McNaught makes a good point there in terms yeah. of the just players, Ruth Holander and all that. The problem is, Aldo, is these players have come in on very good contracts and they've not really excelled their careers. So, for example, Hellander's coming from Serie A, Bologna. How, is he more of a hot property now, has, having done what he's done at Rangers? No, he's not. He's, he's less of a hot well, property. He's probably just like a buyer for him. As a player, he's a good player, but but his, his injury record means that he's not. Kema Roof is exactly the same. His injury record at Rangers has only exacerbated concerns people would have had previously. So I think, uh, yeah, it's something that needs to be that needs to be looked at um, yeah. with those players. Yeah, uh, there's a few uh, comments that will come in before we wrap up, folks. Um, uh, Paul Cock will say you, you, you're cutting the grass analogy, uh, Johnny. There, he says that that reminds me better cut cut the grass. Um, <laughs> Craig, Craig Marshall says, How small is your cup, Derek? Shot of espresso. It's my uh, Diego Maradona inspired little uh, cup I got from uh, Naples. So, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, so a little, a little uh, tiny cup. It's not like my hands are absolutely massive. Um, and a few more uh, com- comments coming in here. Uh, Denzel raises a, a point here. Good friend of the show because of injury and in some cases age, the squad is almost dead on its feet. Surely time to bring in a couple of out of contract options. Um, I totally agree with that. Yeah, do you want to expand on that, Johnny? Oh yeah, listen. I think that's a great point. Um, Derek, by the by the by the, the guy who's who's messaged in there. Listen, uh, Rangers, um, I think did a really really good job um, with John Lundstrom and Fashion Sakala. Now we can all argue about how effective Fashion Sakala is in terms yeah. of consistency, but I think both of them have been good additions to the Rangers team. Both of them have been brought in without a transfer fee, and that's probably saved the club uh, in 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 broad terms probably six seven million pounds in terms of signing those players. Those are players that maybe Rangers couldn't have afforded, actually, to be honest, if they weren't on freedom of transfer. Yeah. And it was a bit, I thought it was a bit odd that this season it was only John Souter. Tell me if I'm wrong, Derek. I think it was only John Souter that came in on freedom of transfer. Tom Tom Lawrence. Tom Lawrence. Sorry, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tom Lawrence and, um, uh, and and John Souter. I was expecting more of the kind of players where you're snapping them up almost I know you mean. three months before the end of the season and you know they're coming yeah. in. Yeah. Um. Because it's just a great way, I think it's a clever way to to bring in players that you you maybe couldn't quite get if there was a transfer fee involved, but also it minimises the risk because it's it's wages at the end of the day and if there's someone in demand, then you can punt them on without worrying about the kind of book value of the player um, in the same way. So I definitely like to see Rangers be thinking on that uh, long and hard for the season ahead, and there's lots and lots of talented players at a contract. We've got Patrick Kasky going through them. And I know, you know Patrick's not a professional scout, but um, a lot of the players that Patrick has highlighted for the Rangers review have gone on and signed for decent clubs. Gone on and signed <laughs> for decent clubs and done very, very well. So he's got an eye for a player, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so it's something you would want to see the club doing more of. It's just obvious, isn't it? It's a no brainer. And Sakala yeah. and Lundstrom are perfect examples of how it can work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, folks, I think that, that what that will do is there. As John, you mentioned, uh, lots of great scouting pieces on the website. Go and check them out. Um, we've got that great offer on, just a pound for two months' worth of content. Uh, go and ha- have a look. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's really <coughs> worthwhile, worth your time. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Um, we'll be back again tomorrow to uh, have a proper look ahead Uh, to Sunday's must-win clash against St. Johnston at McDermott Park. But until then, uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday.